This is a nightmare in Maui. Three percent of the area has been searched. Ninety-six confirmed fatalities. That number will go up dramatically. And uh, the worst collection of circumstances that you could possibly imagine led to the worst, most fatal, most dangerous, most deadly fire in over 100 years in America, if not forever. Uh, We go to the great Alex Stone from ABC News, who's actually in Maui. Good morning, Alex. Steve, good morning. And, uh, yeah, yeah, the the number is just uh, what people on this island cannot comprehend right now and how high it is going to go. There are hundreds of names that are on the missing list right now, and th- there was hope that, that by now it was going to to begin to potentially go down. It has not gone down. In fact, more names have been added to it. Um, you know, it's not uncommon in situations like this for the, the missing list to balloon, and then they very quickly go down as people are able to make contact and and they're able to figure out where their loved ones are. But in this case, that's not going on. So the the governor is saying that really by the hour, more bodies are being found. He announced uh, just a couple hours ago uh, in the overnight hours. It's only one in the morning here right now. So it was uh, late uh, in the night, so a couple hours ago. Uh, the, the number of dead is at 96 now. And the search teams are only just getting here. The cadaver dogs from... Los Angeles County Fire arrived last night. Other jurisdictions are are sending in dogs as well to begin searching. And it's that small number of buildings that have actually been searched so far that that brings a lot of concern about what they're going to find. The fire moved so quickly. What they have searched, there have been human remains. And uh, and that it's it's really only beginning right now. They uh, they seem to all understand and agree that this is the most horrible set of dominoes you could have possibly imagined. Mm-hmm. Uh, an unprecedented uh, weather situation with a hurricane south and a weather system parked north, which created these high winds. The flames that uh, blasted up were moving the fire at a mile a minute. The water pipes started to melt from the fire, so the hydrants were dry. The people that abandoned their cars in the road kept trucks who did have water from getting to where they could put the fires out. I mean, Alex, it was just one thing after another. It absolutely was. And, yeah, Lahaina is not a town that that people were, you know, thinking about that that they were going to have to run from fire at some point. So, yeah, they have brush fires here on Maui, but something to this extent and whatever caused it, they believe probably wires going down in those winds. They will investigate that. That there are a lot of questions here about why didn't uh, any kind of emergency system activate. The governor says they're going to investigate that, but it happened so quickly. And, and it really comes down to cell phone service was immediately knocked out. It was gone. Uh, they do have a robust siren system here for tsunamis and other emergencies. Uh, the, the questions are why didn't that activate? But it seems like nobody was in the right spot to do it in that moment. When you're talking about a mile a minute, running in 80 mile an hour winds, uh, that, that it just it unfolded so quickly. But you know now you just have kind of this shock uh, around the island. Flying in, it is you're flying in on empty planes and they're going out full. These are evacuation flights essentially, commercial airliners that are going in. United, Delta, uh, you know Alaska Airlines, Hawaiian Airlines, American. They, they're coming in to, to get people out and. When you you go around the island, there are community groups that have set up different areas where people are adding their the missing to to lists. They are getting medical help, mental health help. They're getting free haircuts. The people just cannot believe what is unfolding. And unfortunately, by the the hour, really, it is getting worse as they find out the the names and and the the numbers of people who have been killed. And you know that there are people wondering here. How bad will it get? And they don't know. Is is it gonna? Is the number gonna stop around a hundred, or are they gonna be at three or four hundred in the next couple of days? They don't know. Alex, the entire town of Lahaina gone. The, the pictures and the images that we're seeing on television look post apocalyptic. You know, like like uh, apocalyptic. Yeah, it's a yeah. tough yeah. word on a Monday. It's I know. absolutely. So my question: All the residents who have survived, where are they going? Are they being? Are they too being taken off the island, or are they staying at shelters on? the island in a different location? They are everywhere right now on the island, pretty much. I'm sure there are people who have left, but they're just trying to get tourists out of here um, because this is, especially during the summertime, 
I mean, just a, a, a vacation central of, especially for people on the West Coast, where everybody goes during their summer vacation. And, and so they, they wanted to get the, the vacationers out. But no, the, the residents, I mean, they're everywhere. They're in hotels. Uh, the, the tourists have been kicked out of many of the hotels, especially in the Canapali area, which is one of the big resort areas, uh, where they, because there's no power or cell service, uh, they're moving in the uh, the fire departments that are coming in, like L.A. County Fire. They arrived last night. They're at one of those hotels where the, the tourists were told, you got to go. Even though there's no power in the hotel, that's where the, the fire search team is going to be. Uh, and that they're wherever they can be. There are shelters set up. The, the hotels are bringing people in. People are, are staying with others. And it's just kind of figuring out where they can be right now. A big chunk of the island is inaccessible, that they've got roadblocks up not long after you get out of the airport all the way around the western side of the island because that whole area is part of this uh, search effort right now with teams coming in and FEMA arriving and everybody else. So it's uh, they can't be close to Lahaina. Uh, most of them are on the other side near where the airport is on the eastern side of the island, but they uh, people are just going wherever they can be. Um, am I right? Oahu's closest, right? But uh, Honolulu is also, uh, generally speaking, always the most populated area. So can they even take people in those hotels? Yeah, well, and, and they may end up having to move people over to Oahu. Uh, Honolulu is a major city with a major international airport, and there are a lot of flights, the evacuation flights that are going to Honolulu. So I wouldn't be surprised if some people are deciding to do that even on their own. And, you know, that's like a 20-minute flight on Hawaiian Airlines uh, over to, to there versus a six-hour flight back to L.A. Um, that They may end up having to do that. People don't want to leave. In fact, I talked to one woman last night who came in because she is from Maui but now lives on Oahu. But she wanted to, to come in and donate her time. She's a hairstylist, give haircuts, you know, anything she can in the, the community areas. And she said it was just all about being with her family and then coming back to Maui where she grew up and that she didn't want to be on Oahu right now. She wanted to be here. The Hawaiian culture is so steeped in family and tradition. Now, granted, a a lot of people who live here on Maui didn't grow up uh, and are not native Hawaiians, but they they still adopt a lot of that, that this is where they live and that they don't want to. They, they want to be together. They, they want to be with the, the community of Maui and try to get through this. So a lot of people not wanting to leave. But there are those who are having to be evacuated because of medical reasons, bad burns, that sort of thing. Then they have no choice. And, and yeah, then they're going to Oahu. ABC News, while we're talking, has just announced oh the death God. toll is up to 96. And I suppose that's yeah. the kind of day you're going to be reporting on. Yeah. Yeah. It, uh, as these teams get in with the cadaver dogs, it, it's going to be that all day today and, and tomorrow. And even the governor hinted that the numbers are higher than we know right now. It's just more of when they get the official tally in uh, that that they likely it's above what we know it is. Um, but they've got to go through official steps to confirm that something is a look. I don't want to get too graphic, but the, the way people died, they were cremated. And so these dogs have to find small fragments. And that right. takes time. And and so. This is going to be a while. It's the same thing we saw in Paradise, California in 2018. This one now worse than that, but same idea, uh, that that as these dogs get in, that only 3 or 5% of the buildings have been searched. Those are the homes that people were in on Tuesday afternoon, Tuesday evening when the fire ripped through here, um, that that it's going to take time. And, And no doubt the governor keeps saying, Get ready. It's going to get a lot worse. Yeah, and, and for folks that have never been lucky enough to go to Maui or go to Hawaii in general, the folks that work on the islands, not just natives, but people who have moved there to live there and work, these aren't rich folks. They're good, hard-working, no, regular, regular I mean, people. It, 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 yeah, it costs a fortune to live here, but, you know, between gas and, and housing and whatnot. But these are not rich people at all. You know, you think about the big resorts and the money that flies in here to go on vacation – but then when you go uh, kind of around where the airport is for folks who have been here, that's where locals live in, in that community. And that community is not uh, over the top at all. It is not wealthy at all. I mean, you look at, at families, multi-generations that live, you know, in, in small little homes, uh, you know, without a, a whole lot to, to live off of. That no, that this is not a rich island at all. For the most part, yeah, Oprah has a house on here, and other celebrities have a house. A lot of CEOs have homes here, 
but for the local population, no, they're, they're, this is not a very wealthy island. I know you've covered a lot of tough stories. This is going to be one of the uh, toughest, I'm sure, in your career. But I'm glad you're there, and uh, thanks for the update. You got it. Thanks, guys. Alex thanks, Stone, Alex. ABC News.